update I'm going to show you how to stain some papers then jelly plate print on them with some foliage from nature and then create a stunning collage picture art for your wall so I'm using tea and coffee as my stains just to create a subtle different backgrounds so I'm using a variety of papers from wet strength tissue paper to some handmade paper well I'm not sure if it is handmade I'm not quite sure what it is I've just found it in the cupboard this is it some standard printing paper for you know the printer at home so I'm just soaking them in the tea and the coffee and I'm just gonna see what results I get so you need a flat surface to dry them on obviously um, to allow them to dry and if you leave them sort of crumpled then you'll get a slightly crumpled effect so I've got a metal sheet that's got a crisscross on it that will probably transfer to the paper I'd have thought yes like that so just have a play so these are my different papers that I've printed as you can see I've got some transparent ones and some non-transparent that will give me some different backgrounds for printing on it's just fun to see what kind of results you're going to get So now we've got those, I've got my jelly plate, I've got some black acrylic on it, I'm going to give it a roll out. And then I've got a variety of different items I've just picked on walks to have a play with um, on different papers for both positive and negative prints. So apologies for the back of my head, that happens quite a few times in this YouTube video today. I am going to be ripping these papers into six centimetre squares or two and a quarter inch squares depending upon whether you're working in metric or imperial as you can see I'm pressing down really carefully around the objects so that I can get some nice detail on the finished prints I'm just making sure it's taken as well as it can so that's my first print you're going to need a lot of prints um, to choose from so I'm just removing some of that excess black ink from the plate so that I can take a negative print so I've removed the objects and now I'm taking ghost print is it positive no not negative it's a positive I'm taking a ghost print which is a positive print and I've got some more different foliage here please excuse the back of my head which appears quite a few times in this video So I'm really working my fingers around the leaves here, as you can see. I'm trying to take as much ink off the plate as I can, because that's going to give me a better ghost print. So that's really lovely, there's various ones there that I can take a square from. The ghost print hasn't come out as well so let me show you a different way of doing ghost prints you can roll a matte acrylic medium onto your plate once the acrylic's fully dry and then apply your paper and allow it to fully dry before you pull the print off so this method takes a bit more patience but you're going to get more of the black acrylic on your finished print. So once that's fully dry, you can remove the print as you can see, it's taken all, all the ink or most of the ink off the plate. So whilst you're experimenting with different objects you found, uh, that's rosemary, um, some like straw, um, different plants, Um, you need to take lots of different prints, some positive, some negative, some on transparent paper, some on non-transparent paper. So you've got a huge variety of prints to work with, like here. So I've got a lot because I want to make, I want to find a variety of squares to choose from for my finished piece of artwork. So my finished piece of artwork is a collage of 16 different squares. Some of these prints are more successful than others. 
So let's use a viewfinder. First of all, we're going to cut the viewfinder out. Now, Quilter's Ruler is really useful for getting a square. I'm using this particular print I've already done as my guide, um, but a, a Quilter's Ruler will give you a really good 90 degrees angle. And I just want to show you the difference a viewfinder can make in terms of finding your finished images for your collage. So that's a viewfinder cut out. Now get your prints and just play around with your composition. See where you like it. As you can see, it's really helpful. Once you've found your composition from each print, you can use a pencil to just dot in the corners as a guide for either ripping or cutting out your finished prints. So here's my pencil. I preferred a ripped edge, to be honest. So that's what I'm going to do by finger creasing the paper. Now we all know different papers rip slightly differently. Um, some more successfully than others. So make sure you give it a really good finger press. I like to run the back of my nail down the fold before trying to rip the paper. Now this is a, a tight crease at the top here. There's not a lot of paper to work with. So I'm just going to grab my craft knife to fold that up. And I'm just being super careful to get that fold rack because I really like this print. I'm just going to check it on the back just to be sure I've got my 90 degrees. And then I'm carefully ripping that edge. And I'm just going to keep going until I've got my square. This is my first square and, and then again I'm just going to keep going until I've got lots of squares to choose from. I think in the end I had about 20, 22. Thank goodness I realised I was doing six centimetres, not five there. As I say, it's about two and a quarter, it's a bit more than two and a quarter inches. It all depends um, what um, measurements you're used to working with, what size your finished frame is, etc. I picked up a frame in a charity shop, which is the equivalent of a thrift store, which already had an aperture mount cut out, and I am um, working to that in terms of fitting 16 squares into the pre cut mount board. So that's my first one. And as I say, I'm just going to keep going. So here are my squares. I've played around in terms of the darkness of the background, whether they're a ghost print or not, until I'm satisfied with the arrangement. And I'm using my quilters ruler, as you can see, as a guide for placing them down. I'm not going to get, they're not all exactly exactly the same size um, and I'm going to do this by eye as well as by ruler as you can see I've got my mount board down there as a guide as well and I've got a strong paper on the background because I don't want it to you know it needs to dry flat so you need a good quality paper underneath and I'm using matte acrylic medium and painting it on the back of the squares As you can see, some of my prints are a little bit more obvious what they are than others, and they're not all um, vertical. 
I'm just playing with the composition here and just keeping going. So I've done the right side and the bottom and now I'm working on my next row up. Placing that down. So you just keep going until you're satisfied and you allow it to fully dry before you frame your finished piece of artwork. Um, obviously you, you don't have to stain your papers different um, browns at the beginning if you don't want to. You can work purely with black and white. The, the choice is yours. It all depends upon your aesthetic and your decor and how you would like the finished pieces to look. Um, but it's great fun. I love working with jelly plate prints and I love lo working with nature. It's, it's a great combination as well. They just go beautifully hand in hand. So I've got a written blog post if you'd like to see this in written format as opposed to or as well as the video format. Um, it shows you step by step and the link will be in the description below. So enjoy making your own unique piece of art for your home. Thanks for watching and uh, click like and don't forget to subscribe for further art and craft and sewing ideas.